McGuire on the play, a tapped breeding pool to start things off. Jonathan Hobbs tapped Watery Grave. Yeah, one of the, the best parts about Hero Precinct 1 is that it plays both offense and defense against a control strategy. Generating a bunch of extra 1-1s one just applies m sometimes more pressure than they're able to handle. And against uh, aggressive decks, you generate a bunch of defenders that can protect your life total and give you time to find those answers. Saw Dovin get hit by a negate in the early turns here. Now Hobbs is going to fire off Thought Erasure. Takes a lot of hand. There is a deputy attention. Hero Precinct 1, that one's gone, and a Knight of Autumn, as well as a land. Yeah, Knight of Autumn uh, here could play double duty at taking care of something like Search for Escanta, but it looks like Justin McGuire going to fire it off as a 4-3 and put some pressure on Hobbs. Let's see if he has the removal spell. Time was when 3-mana 4-3 would just be kind of a good card. Yeah. Roman on class for 4, Hobbs at 16. <laughs> this is now, not that time. Now, now we have to, it has to double as a, a removal spell or a disenchant or also gain five life and draw five cards, you know? It's worth the Mortify for Hobbs, though, and now McGuire is going to try to make a couple Thopter tokens. Yeah, this is Depose Deploy. Going to be using the Deploy part to make some Thopters and gain some life. This is mostly just uh, turning the, uh, the card from very good on the front half. Uh, it's stalling out aggressive decks, but on the back half can double as a uh, means of pressure. And Hobbs is going to take the opportunity to cast Precognitive Perception there on yeah, his end step. <laughs> say that one five times fast. I can't you? even say it one time slow. Same. <laughs> Precognitive <laughs> Perception. Was this Minority Report? <laughs> That's a good reference. Run! <laughs> <laughs> Play is trading some land drops here. Hobbs is a pretty stocked hand. Just stopped her tokens attacking. Yeah. Hobbs at 12, falling to 10 here. He's got to do something about these. Yeah, eventually, or they're going to eat his life up. Now, McGuire here sitting on, it looks like, multiple copies of Frilled Mystic, uh, just kind of waiting for Hobbs to do anything, content just beating down for two. End of turn, a uh, moment of craving is going to give him a bit of life back and shrink that clock in half. There's a Teferi that's been hanging out in Hobbs' hand. Uh, possibly he's just paying respect. This looks like a deck that probably has Frilled Mystic, and one does go for his Thought Erasure, though that's met by Absorb. Yeah, and this could be a one-two punch to take care of all of the Frilled Mystics that Justin McGuire had access to, and uh, that Thought Erasure now resolving and leaving him with just two Deputy Detention kind of rotting in his hand. And those aren't very good in this matchup, my friend. No. You can uh, reset a Teferi for a time. Yeah. A um, short time. McGuire comes in for one, finds a Hero Precinct one. I would have loved for him to cast a Deputy Detention here, if only just to generate an extra token of Hero Precinct one. That does leave you a little more vulnerable to Kaya's Wrath, but with your opponent still at 14 life, you know, you need to generate some amount of pressure. They have a handful of cards, but it looks like uh, he meets the Kaya's Wrath anyway, so he saves that Deputy Detention. Yeah, Teferi into Kaya's Wrath. Now McGuire will use Deputy to grab the Teferi. We'll see how long that one sticks for. Yeah, and the problem here is that Jonathan Hobbs has been drawing a bunch of cards throughout this entire game. So uh, very like unlikely that uh, Debbie Detention is going to uh, survive long enough. Uh, but looks like it does. Wow. Yeah, Hobbs had a moment of craving that can't deal with Deputy, but it did deal with the Growth Chamber Guardian. Right. And uh, that Growth Chamber Guardian can get out of control in this matchup for the Esper Control deck, just generating uh, up to four, four, four creatures. So Hobbs using that moment of craving in a timely fashion but finds the Mortify, gets back his Teferi, and this should be over. How long do you want to keep playing the game when your opponent has Teferi and you don't? Not very long. Yeah, no, we, <laughs> <laughs> we found the answer. It's like, how many licks does it take to get to the end of this game? One. One. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, if you take a look at the Cardboard Live extension, you'll be able to see both players' full 75s, including their sideboard, which we're going to go over now. Maguire, down a game, needs to really come up with something interesting and important here to do after sideboard. Uh, what's he got for me? Three Baffling End, one Dovin Grand Arbiter, two Lyra Dawnbringer, a Carnage Tyrant, two Settle the Wreckage, two Entrancing Melody, two Negate, a Disdainful Stroke, and a Teferi Hero of Dominaria. So you can go one of two ways. The The main deck for for Justin McGuire's Bant mid-range strategy is already a bit aggressively slanted thanks to Growth Chamber Guardian, Hero Precinct 1. 
Uh, the sideboard offers uh, a bit of protection with Negate and Disdainful Stroke, but uh, some really uh, hard-hitting 5 and 6s with 1 Teferi and 1 Carnage Tyrant. I like bringing in all that stuff as well as the really powerful Planeswalker Dovin Bond, and you can get some of the removal spells out of your deck as well as potentially some of those uh, deposed deploys, since, uh, or, or sorry, Warrant Wardens as well, uh, since uh, they're not doing a whole lot. Uh, three copies of Mandax Spell Bears from Justin McGuire could do some heavy lifting, but he's got to draw them first. Hobbs is a creature-heavy sideboard. What he has registered today, four Thieves of Sanity, three Duress, one copy of the Eldritch Reborn, two Hostage Takers, four Basilica Bell Haunts, and Akaya's Wrath. Now, this creature-based sideboard from Jonathan Hobbs is fairly common from Esper Control decks nowadays, especially Basilica Bell Haunt. Uh, I don't believe uh, it's any secret that Wyatt Darby was able to find a winning strategy for beating Mono Red, and that's just casting Basilica Bell Haunt. And a lot of these Esper Control decks have adopted that. Uh, with that said, it's not that great here, but I do expect Hostage Taker uh, and as well as Kai's Wrath to come in. Players trading some land drops here. McGuire, the first one to force some action. There's a Dovin Grand Arbiter. Hobbs will play a search for his Kanta and another land. So both players kind of checking the boxes so far, though these stop their tokens from the Dovin are applying some reasonable pressure. Yeah, and at this point, Justin actually doesn't have to do anything except uh, attack with the Nick Miller tokens if he doesn't want to. Hobbs is under duress from uh, the, the, all the pressure being generated. And then Justin's going to get to sit back on Negate, the Sateful Stroke, and Frilled Mystic. But while the shields are down for one turn, Maguire taps out for that deploy. And Hobbs is able to take care of the Dovin Bond with that Vraska's Contempt. Yeah, really timely Contempt there, though. Here's Ooh, another baby. Dovin. Four Thopters coming across, and Dovin just goes to eight loyalty immediately. That plus ability gives you loyalty for every creature that connects that turn. Yeah, that is sick. Cry of the Carnarium here. Going to clean up these Thopters, but that Dovin Bond's ultimate could come into play here. Yeah, you ever notice how it's minus seven loyalty to do that, and the Dovin was on eight? Yeah, it's still there. Now, uh, it's, it's very similar to Dig Through Time and this ability. Normally, Planeswalker's ultimate ability is in the game, but this three-mana Dovin Bond uh, allows the game to progress with you at a significant advantage. Uh, but that's kind of the downside of being a three-mana Planeswalker as opposed to four, five, and six. The ability is very powerful, uh, and, and you can see here getting the best three cards out of the, all those ones you get to look at off the top. Yeah, huge amount of card advantage and also card selection. You know, right. It's a pick of a lot of cards. Right. And, and he still has the Dovin. Right. And uh, also it's it's important to note that uh, uh, the Dovin actually ultimated in just one tick up and then a tick down thanks to having all those creatures in play. Really benefits you for having a bunch of those uh, uh, creatures on the battlefield already. Yeah, and we have seen Depose Deploy start to be picked up by the Bant Reclamation deck. Seen it a little bit, but I think that this shell actually takes much more advantage of that card. Frequently when the Depose side is bad, when you don't want to be tapping creatures or your opponent doesn't have creatures to tap, the card's a little bit mopey, but once you combine it with Dovin, you actually can see how powerful it was in this game. Right. Now, uh, McGuire here did something that I don't know if I would have done. He used one of his counter spells, Disdainful Stroke, to counter a Chemister's Insight. And while Hobbs hasn't really presented him a lot of p potential targets for it, I think that saving that for a Teferi, Caius Wrath, or something similar is a little bit more important. And here you see he goes for a deploy, tapping out, and he gets met with two big removal spells as well as an Absorb. McGuire still has that one Thopter they made off the Dovin over a couple turns. Now he's going to try to get some more loyalty back as that connects. He hits Dovin on three loyalty as a hero precinct one to the table. And Hobbs has transformed to search for his Kanta. He's actually finding a Kaya's Wrath off of that and sweeping things up. As you can see, Hobbs has had the right answers at the right time. And even though that Dovin Bond was able to do his ultimate, McGuire just burning his resources to counter the card draw. And he's really paying the price for it. That Kai's Wrath completely taking all the wind out of his sails. And I've been impressed by Dovin in this game, but Dovin is not as good as his Kanta the Sunken Rune. Yeah, that's certainly true. I mean, uh, it's able to generate some Thopters, but all the life gain from Vraska's Contempt and Absorb, those little chip shots from Thopters is, is not really putting that much pressure on Hobbs. Yeah, and Hobbs found it to ferry off of that last activation. He's going to jumpstart Chemistry's Insight, so a lot of fresh cards in the hand. It's going to main phase Precognitive Perception. There it is. I almost said it right. <laughs> oh, you said it right. I mumbled a little bit. Well, Hobbs decides to keep all three. I think I saw a land somewhere in those, just putting value on hitting his land drops here. Uh, one of which is a Thought Eraser. He's going to steal Conclave Tribunal. And now he's just got to figure out a way to beat these two Thopters and that Dovin Bond. Yeah, 
Going back to McGuire. One of those stop is going to get hit by a moment of craving. The other will connect. Dovin's at 3 and Knight of Autumn. That one is late for the search, so that's just a 4-3 again this game. Yeah, Teferi going to tick up here, draw a card. Finds Akaya's Wrath. Still gets to untap and hold up Counterspell Mana. This is looking so bad for Justin. Down a game. This could knock him out of top eight contention. You could make an argument that Teferi is more powerful than Dovin. Uh, looks like we found Growth Chamber Guardian. We're going to play and activate that immediately. Going to search up another one. But not enough mana to cast and activate this one. And he just casts. Wants to fade another Kaya's Wrath here. Yeah, but, I mean, Hobbs has already cast two. Uh, well, oh, there's a third one. Now he's cast three. Uh, Dovin Bond's still there, but Teferi has the option to take it out. He decides to draw a card here. The disrespect. Yeah, activate uh, Skonto of the Sunken Ruin. And still gets to untap and hold up mana for that absorb. That's the Grand Arbiter you're talking to. You're just going to oh. leave it on the table. Ooh, and Carnage oh, Tyrant. No. That is a problem. No, that's Bruce. So bad for Hobbs. At this juncture, he's burned through three of his four copies of Kaya's Wrath. And he's going to need to find that in a hurry. That Carnage Tyrant represents so much damage. He does have active Teferi. He found another one, and he has active Iskanta. He'll draw with Teferi to start looking for that Wrath. you got to deal with Carnage Tyrant quickly, though. Yeah, it swings in for seven, has Hexproof, can't be countered. That Absorb useless on the previous turn. Miss off of the Ascanta here, and he'll cast another Search. Now, he's not uh, hes not dead yet. He, he's going to get hit for eight. There's a chance uh, McGuire actually uh, ticks down and threatens Lethal on the following turn with a hit for eight and a hit for nine. But that would have been undone by a single removal spell, and with uh, Ascanta, the Sunken Ruin, active, it's not really a dream that you need to, to be uh, looking for. So I'm going to just kill the token with a moment of craving, pad the life total a bit. Should be somewhere around 12 life from that Carnage Tyrant hit. Hobbs finds precognitive perception. He's going to cast it on the main phase. This is a lot of looks. Three to the bottom, three fresh cards. Yeah, and without access to a bunch of creatures to put in the way, uh, it has to be Kai's Wrath, and, and there it is. is. And still has absorbed mana up. Let's see if Justin Guire can do the impossible. He can't. He's not even going to try. And Jonathan Hobbs, 2-0, your winner over Justin McGuire. He'll advance to 11-3. and three. Yeah, that was a really impressive showing from that Esper Control deck, handily dealing with all of the threats out of that Bant mid-range deck. We saw multiple copies of Grow Chamber go.